Okay. I think that's Well, you guys, yeah, whatever you guys want to, yeah, you guys hear whatever you guys want to say. Okay, well, you can sit over there if you want to, wherever. Um, let's see. Um, I, um, special. Good morning, and welcome to worship as the first United Church of Christ Congregational in Milford, Connecticut, where we follow in the ways of Jesus who serves God and neighbor in love. You are welcome here whether you are two or 102, whether you like chocolate or not, whether you are a morning person or a night owl, an introvert or an extrovert, whether you say neither or neither, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It is the first Sunday in March, which means that we will be sharing later in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. It is also as the first Sunday of the month, the, the Sunday when we invite people to donate to our church's food closet. Uh, Easter flower orders are being accepted currently and there are details and a link in the bulletin. Uh, and you can also find that on our website. 
the youth choir. Thank you, Wan Zhong. Yes, that reminds me. The youth choir is rehearsing uh, this morning, uh, starting around 11.15 up in the choir room. That's for fourth through seventh graders. Uh, the On This Rock, Peter and the Good News online video series premiered on Friday on our YouTube channel. Uh, you're welcome to watch that and read uh, the Bible stories and reflect on the meaning of uh, Peter's discipleship and our discipleship. This upcoming Saturday, there is another membership exploration class, First Church 101, from 9 a.m. to 11.15 in the church library. You can sign up online or just show up, and I will be leading that. In, uh, uh, also on that uh, Saturday morning, uh, so our next weekend, our youth group will be hosting a potato soup fundraiser. We invite you to pre-order soup to eat in or to pick up on Saturday before or after the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Uh, and you can also pick up the soup on Sunday during coffee hour. And your support benefits our mission trip to Maryland in June. Uh, and let's see, so, and where can they pre-order for that downstairs and downstairs in Fellowship Hall, um, where we're going to be having coffee hour after worship. So we invite you downstairs for coffee hour after the 10 a.m. service is over. This evening, Confirmation 1 and 2 will be meeting at 5 p.m. down in Fellowship Hall, and then both Junior Pilgrim Fellowship and Senior Pilgrim Fellowship will be meeting together at 6 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. Um, next Sunday at 11.15, um, we'll be having a planning session for a series of hikes that we're going to be doing uh, throughout the spring. So if you're interested in hiking together with some folks, you can come to that or let me know, and we will uh, incorporate uh, you into those plans. Uh, two weeks from today is uh, one great hour of sharing where you'll be invited to uh, give to uh, different uh, um, charities that are connected with the United Church of Christ. And also you'll be invited to uh, help out with a special delivery uh, where we are going to be delivering some uh, items to uh, folks who are shut in. Um, from our congregation. I'm grateful uh, for our liturgists this morning, include uh, Lisa Roy and uh, April and uh, Will, and as well as a couple of our deacons, uh, Jim and Patty. But I now I'm going to invite up April and Will to introduce themselves to you all as leaders of the church. Good morning. I'm April Priest. I'm your new moderator. Um, I'm from Milford, my husband, I have two adult children. I became active in the church. I used to sit in the back quietly for a long time until the kids decided to go to youth group. And then um, I became an advisor, did a bunch of mission trips, which was so rewarding. And then after they graduated, I became involved in trustees. I was the trustee chair, took a year break, and now I'm back again as your moderator. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Will Osanich. This is my third year as your vice moderator. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve you over these last two years and one more to go. Uh, but the biggest thing, I think my single biggest accomplishment that I was really proud of was that I called April to be the moderator this year. <laughs> uh, and I'm really looking forward to work with her and the rest of the board um, to you know, just keep doing what we're doing and maybe some things even a little better. So thanks very much. Thank you, and yeah, if you're trying to get in touch with them, you can call the church office and we can direct you towards them if you have any feedback uh, to offer them as they lead uh, the church. But now let us turn towards one another and greet each other with signs of peace. Peace be with you. Can everyone please rise to, for the call of worship? We gather as pilgrims on a journey of faith. We come seeking the awareness of God's presence as we travel on. We come seeking sustenance as we serve God and neighbor. 
Warm our hearts, O oh God, so that we can serve and be helped in your circle of mercy. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, we enjoy being served by others in stores and restaurants, at home or wherever people are willing or paid to join us. Pray of us, for we forget how to serve others. Help us to see you and Christ in people during their time of need. May we follow the example of Jesus and lead through our service so that others may serve as follow. We pray this name, leader, Jesus Christ, amen. Christ came to serve us in love so that we may be saved and transformed in new life. Forgiveness 
is the foundation of Jesus' mission of service. May we be forgiven and forgive each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God and amen. Please be seated. And I invite children forward now and youth for a message. And while you're coming up, I just want to say, sorry, I forgot to mention the parrots are playing the trumpet together. They are trumpet players and they are married. They really, yes, they, they represent harmony in more ways than one, right guys? Right, <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Okay, oh, yes, you got that. Okay, Jim's got that. Good, right, let's see, so who's? I'm two. You're two, okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, welcome, good morning to all. I am so glad to have you here now because you are going, we are going to show you everybody here, how we serve each other in this church. Does anybody know what the word serves means? Yeah? When you give someone something. Yeah, when you give someone something. How about someone else? Well, okay. You know, okay, that's okay. That's, okay. Any that's other... what we're gonna learn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah go ahead. Okay. Cupcakes too. You eat cupcakes too? Okay. <laughs> no, maybe maybe afterwards. Okay. So yeah. So what's so you're using the word serving to help somebody? Is serving somebody to help them? Yeah. I smell candy. Oh well, we'll see. <laughs> Hold on there. <laughs> okay. So. Actually, I'm going to go back to what you said about serving others, and that's probably how we use the word serve the most. At restaurants, we talk to the servers. Other words, we, we might use waiter, waitress, wait staff. Have anybody gone to a restaurant and seen a waiter? You do? Yeah? Okay. People who help us get our food and drink to us at the restaurant, they're servers. Yes, well, there's other kinds of food service, too. Way back in the 20th century, the early 1990s, my first job, I was an ice cream scooper. So people would ask me for a flavor of ice cream in a cup or a cone, and I would serve it to them. You like ice cream in a cup? Uh, I was more of a cone guy myself. Then I went away to college, and everybody's like, hey, Adam, can you make this three-scoop ice cream thing? Because I knew how to do it. Um, but that was back when my metabolism meant I could actually eat all that and not gain weight. Oh, thank you, teenage metabolism. But today, we are going to all be food servers to each other, okay? Jesus told us to be servants. To try to serve other people instead of always being served by others. Jesus didn't talk, just talk about serving others. He did it. Later in worship, we'll have Holy Communion, where we remember Jesus served his disciples bread and wine. Here we share bread and grape juice. All right. So now we're going to have a little game. And you did smell candy. You actually smelled 
Do you smell, yeah, I smell chocolate probably, because there's chocolate right here. So we're going to have this game uh, where we're going to practice serving each other. This is how the game works, okay? We have this communion plate here with individually wrapped kisses. You like chocolate and vanilla? I like chocolate and vanilla too. Uh, that's good. Um, so we're going to have these here, and what we're going to do is we're going to practice where all of us are going to take turns getting the plate. Somebody's going to give us the plate, okay? And then we're going to hold the plate for them while they take one of the kisses, okay? And then we're going to give the plate to somebody else who hasn't gotten one yet. And then when we, after we hand them the plate, then we're going to take one. So the idea is we don't, we don't take the Hershey's kiss while we are holding the plate. We let somebody else serve us. You think you can do that? So you're going to have to wait until you've given the plate to somebody else before you can take one. You think, you, how do you play the game? We're going to do it right now. We're going to do it right now. We're going to see how this goes. Okay. Okay. He's going to serve. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Okay. That's right. So nobody. That's the other way around. Well, we can, you can do this too. It works. You got to play. Yeah, you got to take the plate and get, yeah. You get the chocolate and you feel like you just want to eat it right then, don't you? Yeah, I gotta, you gotta wait. So. <laughs> and you serve her, her, her. If anybody's allergic to chocolate, here we've got gummies too, okay? Good. Getting this. Great, okay. Now you turn, you turn, serve. And this is good for those of us out there. When we try to, when we have communion, we try to do it so that we don't hold the plate and take it. We try to do it where somebody serves us because then we remember that we serve each other. That's part of what it means to be the church. Oh, thank you so much, Patty. Okay, now I'm going to hold the plate while you get one. Okay? Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, so yeah, the challenge is you have to wait. Uh, but uh, let's see. So here we go. Um, um, oh, well, I can, I can then say. Uh, Jesus wants us to find meaning in our lives by serving others and to accept the help and service of others when we need it. It's called the cycle of service. Sometimes we're able to give help and service, and sometimes we receive that help. Sometimes it's hard to ask for help, but it can be a really powerful thing when we receive that help from others. Will you join me? Let's pray. God, thank you, Jesus, for Jesus, who urges us to serve others, to share our love, and to be humble. Help us to serve each other today with communion and to serve each other in the world. Amen. And now you're welcome to go back to your families. And maybe, oh, do you want to eat the chocolate? If you're not allergic to chocolate, you can eat the chocolate now, too. Okay. I mean, that's what I, it's, it's great. I'm always sending your, your kids back to you after they've just had some, some chocolate and caffeine. <laughs> the, no Sunday school today. I know you get to hang out with your family. This church is grounded in humble service to our neighbors and each other. Without this church, there are people who would go hungry and be left without a listening ear or medical equipment to help them thrive. We serve people in the image of Christ. Will the ushers please come forward for our financial gifts are given and received as we think about the spiritual gifts we give and receive as the music ministry helps celebrate God, God's love with song.
we offer ourselves with these gifts, confident that you, that you and the church can find a purpose for them and for us. Expand our vision to embrace new possibilities of how to serve it. We rededicate our lives here and now. May our offerings reach beyond the barriers of our former thinking and doing. In the spirit of Christ, we pray and live. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> this morning's reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. It's just before Jesus enters into the city of Jerusalem in the last week of his life. He and his disciples have been journeying south from the region of Galilee, where they're from, uh, down to Jerusalem. And uh, with, the, uh, with the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem on the horizon, the hopes of many of his followers is that he will go into Jerusalem and uh, overthrow the government that is there and become the king of the Jews and institute a new golden age uh, among uh, the Jewish people. And so there's lots of speculation, lots of hope of what Jesus might do if he becomes uh, the king of the Jews. And so Jesus uses uh, some of uh, that discussion and some of those hopes to turn some ideas on their heads and to reflect on what his kingdom will bring. So listen now for God's word. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before Jesus, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those to whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the other ten disciples heard about this, they were angry with the two brothers. <clears throat> but Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you. But whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. May God enrich blessings to this reading of Holy Word. And will you pray with me? God, your word is rock to us. May we stand on the rock of your word as a solid foundation from which we can see the vastness of your love for us and all creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Imagine that you go to school and you get to eat a free breakfast and a free lunch there five days a week, but your parents have to spend all their earnings on rent and heat and electricity and can't afford much in the way of groceries. So on a Friday afternoon, Instead of getting excited for the weekend, like lots of your classmates do, instead you get sad because you don't know what you might eat over the next two and a half days. Or imagine that you're an adult and your elderly parent has had major surgery. They're getting out of the hospital or the nursing home, but they don't have the equipment that they need when they go home, and they don't have the money to afford the equipment either. Or imagine that you're in your mid-80s, you live at home by yourself, your children live in another part of the country, your spouse has died, your neighbors are so busy they hardly notice what you're up to, 
and you get lonely. Maybe you can't imagine any of these things. Maybe you can. Maybe you know of people who have gone through these things. Maybe you have gone through these things or are going through these things right now. Going through such challenges can make us feel sad, like we're forgotten, like the world doesn't care about us. But now imagine that you have the ability to do something about those situations. You have the ability to cheer someone up who's feeling lonely and down. You have the ability to help someone get the medical equipment that they need. You have the ability to feed a hungry child or adult. Would you take the time out of your busy schedule to do those things? What if you had a certain amount of time and you had to choose between, on the one hand, going to a spa or to a fancy restaurant where you are being served by someone, or going and serving someone? Which of those two choices would you opt for? In Matthew's Gospel, we just heard Jesus interact with Mrs. Zebedee who does her best helicopter parent impression, I think. She not only hovers over her two sons, James and John, but also grabs them by the hand, drags them in front of their teacher, Jesus, and boldly asks Jesus to give them seats next to him if and when he becomes the king of the Jews. Jesus tries to gently explain that she's not really aware of how things are going to play themselves out what he's working towards, what he and the disciples will have to go through to get there, the baptism by fire that awaits them in the near future. He does, though, ask the brothers if they are willing to drink from the cup that he is going to drink from, and they say, sure, yes, anything to be with you, Jesus. For those of us who know what's going to come next, the death, crucifixion of Jesus, the scene is ironic and awkward enough. Then the other ten inner disciples hear that the Zebedee brothers are angling for prime seats next to their leader, and they start to bicker about it. In some of the gospel stories from this part of, the, of Jesus' ministry, there's even arguments they have about who is the greatest disciple. These other ten disciples also want a shot at sitting next to Jesus if he becomes the king. Jesus sees where all this discussion is going and he stops it in its track saying, whoa, this reminds me of how the big and powerful leaders in the world hold on to power to throw their weight around and look great and important around others and who make life miserable for others in the process, feeling like everybody needs to serve them. But in my kingdom, in my kingdom, when it comes, you have to serve to be great. The Son of Man didn't choose to be large and in charge, but chooses instead to give up his life for the sake of others. If you want to follow me, Jesus says, then the me-first attitude has to go to make way for a serve-first attitude. Emma Davis was a church member here who chose to collect used prom dresses and used medical equipment so that her house could be a clearing house of sorts. And when people needed items, she would loan them out to people. Emma Davis died in the 1960s, and it was at that point that our church chose to continue her legacy through a medical equipment ministry. First, it was led by some couples and a couple of other individuals who helped loan out medical equipment from their garages. Then later, we used a tractor trailer that was in the back corner of a commercial lot in Milford. And over the last 20 years or so, we've had two sheds in the corner of our church parking lot with wheelchairs, shower chairs, walkers, commodes, and the like. 
Davis's work is now shared by a committee of people who take turns being on call for a week. During that week, they pick up voicemails of people who are looking for help. They call the clients back, and if we have the equipment that the people need, they arrange for those folks to pick them up at the church parking lot. And this is especially necessary because if you're not aware, uh, the government program Medicare only helps people with one piece of medical ambulatory equipment. If you request multiple pieces of equipment, they'll help with one, and then you're on the hook for the others. And so oftentimes, as people are making a transition from a convalescent home or a hospital to their own house or to wherever they're going next, they're in need of multiple pieces of equipment. I spoke this week with three people who currently choose to volunteer with the Emma Davis Medical Equipment Ministry, Sandy Janes, Kristen Ayer, and Michelle Steinloff. Now, Sandy has been a longtime volunteer with the Emma Davis Ministry, and she says she's always amazed at the appreciation people have for what she does, even if it doesn't take a long time, if it's simply picking up the phone, calling somebody, coming over to the sheds, getting something to them. The amount of gratitude that she's experienced time and time again has truly been rewarding to her. People move to tears for being honored with that kind of help. Now, Kristen says she also likes to help people. She's done nursing, and so she knows that Emma Davis is a natural way to, to help as an extension of her career. Kristen notes that serving people feels good to those who are helping people. It feels good to be a servant. She also noted that in a world where there are many religious people who have been known to treat folks who are different than them uh, with disdain, and in a world where there are many people who think that all religious folks are judgy, that being a compassionate Christian is a real vital part of our ministry, not only for the work that it does for those people in need, but also as a testimony to the world that following Jesus means really loving people, even people, and especially people who are different from us, people who are going through crises, people who don't look the same as us. That is what it means to be a Christian. When I asked Sandy how her service connects to her faith, she said that helping each other is what we are meant to do. And she is grateful that God has given us the good feeling when we enrich lives. And in that way, then both the helper and the helped are enriched by service. I'm excited to hear that Emma Davis is looking into some on-call buddy systems so that some new folks can volunteer and learn the ropes of someone who might have some more experience and a little more free time because the opportunity to serve in that way is amazing. Now, I also spoke with Michelle Steinloff, who is a leader both with the Emma Davis Medical Equipment Ministry and Milford Food to Kids. I don't know when she has time to sleep, but she finds it somehow, a little bit at least. Michelle talked to me about her idea of service going back all the way to when she was a child. If you don't know, Michelle is a middle child. And she suggests that being a middle child means being a peacemaker, means trying to get everybody to live together, to stand each other, to, to work together, to be a stuff doer. When she was a young adult, Michelle became president of the JCs, a community service organization. She grew to find the personal benefit of service, that good feeling that, uh, that Sandy was also talking about. And on the other side of the coin, Michelle also remembers times when she needed help. And people who didn't have to choose to help her did so anyway. And she remembers how transformative that kind of experience is, how it melts your heart when you are vulnerable and people take notice and do something about it. When it comes to medical equipment ministry, Michelle thinks of all those times she's not only represented the church in sharing the equipment, but also in listening to the stories of the people who pick up the equipment, because so many times there's a story associated with needing that equipment, right? There's stories of sadness and crisis, of uncertainty, and listening to those stories is part of the healing process that we offer as well. The Emma Davis volunteers agreed that some of the underappreciated servants in this 
web of service include the physical therapists and the occupational therapists out there, the social workers, all those people who help those folks in times of need, many of whom are the folks who get in touch with Emma Davis on a regular basis. They not only serve the needs of people when those people are residents in their hospitals or nursing homes, but also as they move on to the next phase of their process. Sometimes they're even the ones who come and pick up the medical equipment for their clients because they care so deeply. We are grateful to be a part of that web of service. And Milford Food to Kids, if you're not aware, it's only been around for seven years now, but it has made such an impact on our community. Born out of connecting the needs of children with the ability of our community to fill those needs, fulfill those needs of food. You know, at first it took some convincing of our community that there are actually food insecure children in Milford because when we in suburban Connecticut think about the prototypical family or child, we imagine that everybody in southern Connecticut is being taken care of. But especially over the last 15 years or so, it's not been the case. Between teachers and school social workers, stories come pouring out of what kids are dealing with when they don't have food at home and how joyful they become when people not only notice that they are hungry, but do something about it. One of the great things that Michelle and Reverend Ashley will tell you about Milford Food to Kids is that it's not just people in our congregation who propel it, who make it happen. Yes, we are integral to it, but it's something that we have offered as a form of service throughout the community. There are so many volunteers, the people who get the food and bring it to the Plymouth Building, the people who pack the food, the people who on Fridays deliver the food to the schools, the people who donate food or donate finances to it. It truly is a network because there is so much care so many people willing to be servants in the service of hungry children. It is an amazing ministry. And it is because of the notion that we who follow Jesus must be servants that that ministry exists. Milford Food to Kids, like Emma Davis, connects us with public servants, teachers, school social workers, principals, other educators who care deeply about those children, but who can't feed all the kids on their own. Once again, we are part of a wider servant team that includes volunteers and professionals that make sure that God's young people are honored and given dignity. At First Church, we do many forms of service, not only feeding people and getting them medical equipment. We also reach out to elderly members to let them know that they are loved and integral to the body of Christ. That's what the special deliveries will be in a couple of weeks. We see, serve each other as deacons on the music ministry. They're teaching Sunday school, being youth group advisors, singing, serving on the Christian outreach ministry, raising funds and awareness of different causes. Whether we're trustees, members of personnel or stewardship, whether we are usher, ushering or hosting coffee hour, so many forms of service here. So much of what we do fulfills Jesus' hope that we will serve just as he serves us. That is a rock of who we are. We are defined in so many ways by our service. Lent is a great time to assess how service can define us. And so if you are already involved in service in the community or through the church, thank you so much. You are fulfilling what Jesus calls us to do. And if you've not heard that thanks and gratitude from others, I, on behalf of them, tell you, thank you so much. It means so much to people whom you may never meet. And if you want to serve, for the first time or want to serve even more, First Church is a place where you can plug into the existing service opportunities or where you can think up new forms of service like Milford Food to Kids seven years ago. It was something we hadn't done and we embraced it because we knew it was going to serve needs of people. You can be a servant. You can provide servant leadership where you show others that serving shows other people how to live in hope and love. 
Jesus calls us to be servant leaders, not trying to make ourselves look good, but trying to bring the kingdom of God closer to earth. I have learned so much about servant leadership by so many of you all, humble people who are trying to simply make a difference because they know what it means to be vulnerable and to rely on others. We all rely on God's love. We all rely on each other for love and service. And to do so in humility is to walk in the ways of Jesus. So as we prepare for sharing the sacrament of communion, let us reflect on how Jesus leads us through his loving service. Thanks be to God and amen. You may be seated. For all who seek the abundance of Christ's presence in their lives and to participate in the joy and the community of God's people. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. For all those who know Christ's voice and also for those who seek to know his voice, let us come to this table to participate in this meal that God serves us in love. 
We practice open communion, meaning that you simply need to want to share in the meal in order to uh, have a place at the table. That is the nature of God's extravagant welcome. That is the nature of God's servant, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. We only know how to serve others because you serve us first, God. You serve us through the sustaining power of creation, the inner workings of our bodies, through the bounty that we partake of. Before we have even asked for help of someone else, you have made it possible by their life and their breath. Then Christ comes to serve humankind while humankind eventually turns its back on Jesus. While the betrayer, denier, and deserter sit around Jesus, that is when he serves them the Last Supper and offers them forgiveness and overflowing grace before they know they even need it. Today, through the Holy Spirit, O oh God, you serve us through inspired moments, through the gift of community, through the assurance that we are never alone, but are connected to all your people across space and time. Transform us through your saving and serving love at this table. Transform us into servants who find wholeness through helping others. Consecrate us to the work that redeems us and that bridges divides among us. Bless now, O oh God, us and bless this bread and this cup to become like Christ who lowered himself so that he might be lifted up in praise and so that he might offer the model of servant leadership to us we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples for the Passover meal and Jesus led them by serving them, taking the loaf of bread, lifting it up, offering God thanks, and breaking the bread, saying, this is my body broken for you. And then he shared it with them, serving them. And in a similar way, at the end of the supper, Jesus took the cup and lifting it up, he gave God thanks and said, This is my blood which is shed for you. As often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And then he served them. The gifts of God for the people of God served just for you. Come, for all things are ready.
And now let us join our hearts in prayer. God, we thank you for this meal. We thank you for your service to humankind and all creation. We thank you for the blessing of serving one another, relying on each other in Christian love and community. We give thanks for people who serve others in so many ways, including those who serve their country in the military and put their lives on the line, for those who work on front lines. We pray for the people of Ukraine, the people in Israel, Palestine. We pray for a just world where sharing and service by all means scarcity for none, your kingdom coming closer to earth. We give thanks for warm air outside and for the hope of spring that reminds us of hope in the resurrection that will come, but remind us that that hope only comes through that valley of the shadow of death and through our remembrance of Holy Week. We pray for people, God, who are hurting in body or in spirit, as we name some now, Rita, Susan, Joe, Cindy, Dave, Zen, Marty, Kim, Earl, Diana, Kevin, Linda. If it is your will, grant them your healing spirit. Oh God, you have already received into your everlasting arms those who have died. But we name some now as we grieve. We pray for the soul of Bob Sherrick. Pray for the soul of Nancy Rotman. Pray for the soul of Jim Testone on the anniversary of his passing. Pray for the soul of Frank Fortunati. For the soul of Fred Lindsay. God, remind us that hope springs eternal through faith in you and Christ and Easter. Now, O God, let us be your servants in the service of others. Let us receive service and gratitude. Let us rejoice in the cycle of mercy and service. In Christ's servant spirit, we pray. Amen.
You are the body of Christ in the world today, wounded yet healing and serving. May your generosity of service and presence bless those whom you meet and bless you in the name of God who creates, saves, and guides us. Amen.